I came into the Nation of Islam in college. Mm -hmm. So I I left home and never went back. And I called her, I, I dropped out of school. Oh, 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 and oh Sam. Sam. I hit her with oh, the oh, I Sam. Sam. I hit, yeah. I'm like, look, if I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna hit you at the same time with everything. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like hey my um so yeah, I ain't coming home again. I hit her with the, the coming to America. Yeah. Hey, I ain't coming home again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh and also I'm 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 in the nation of Islam. Yeah. So she she was needless to say, uh very jarred, but this is me and my adolescence. I'm nineteen years old mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. And so I just just told her how I felt it. Uh so, mm -hmm. you know, she thought it was a fake. What's up, this your boy Lando XL, Mr. 18 Pockets. And hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, Mr. McGee, a.k.a. Boopy, a.k.a. Born Rich. And Lano, we got a banger today, man, brother. you already know, man. We Listen, this is serious. <laughs> I do it. Mm, I do it. This is serious. Yes, man. Uh, we, we have a, a, a beautiful guest in here today, yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. We have a, um, we have a brother, mm -hmm. um, um, a, a, a minister. Oh, yes, uh, for sure. A, a father. Um, a leader. Okay. You know what I mean? Keep we going. have a, a, a very inspirational brother here today, man. We got my brother, your brother, mm -hmm. our brother, Brother Sam X. Sam man, how X. you doing, bro? Yeah. Incredible, brother. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much, man. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Yeah, he getting good uh, at him. Man, thank you both, brothers. Uh, for, <laughs> I appreciate for that. just really the invite. You know, I'm really humbled and honored to be here with you. Yes, sir. Because mm -hmm. every time that we get together, mm -hmm. the conversation is always amazing. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. It's uplifting. Yes. So I commend you for the work that you're doing because it's okay. not, you know, it's it's a lot of podcast equipment out here. Oh, most definitely. Yes, but yes. it don't belong to everybody. But I can say most, <laughs> most certainly definitely. that you brothers are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. And so okay. I was so looking forward to this conversation. Thank most you, brother. Man. That's a mushy moment yeah, right there. Right. Hey, we, we have mushy. No, yeah. that's something that's part of the brother, uh, yeah. right. It's sincere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the we end of the day, that. I meant what I said. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we're we definitely uh, glad to have you, uh, mm. Sam X, man. It's been a, a long time coming. Normally, um, this is kind of like, I guess if you had to put us in a box, you would say this is a music uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. But today we're going to uh, veer off a little bit. Yeah, there's something special. Like, there's something yeah, special for us. We're going to talk about a little bit bit more uh than music we're gonna yes, get sir. to know you mm -hmm. make sure the people yes, our audience gets to know you you yes, know sir. man listen a lot of times bro we need what, what do they call it we need cherry flavored medicine Mm. If okay. that makes sense, yeah, bro. I got you. you know what I mean? Yes, like we we can we can do yeah. our bullshit all, all we want to, but sometimes we just need a little medicine, man. Yes, but you got to mm -hmm. put a little, you know, for our people. Right. You got to put a little flavor, a little yes, flavor you know, with it. Most definitely. Yeah, let's see a little yeah, Lowry's yeah. Most in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes water people. ain't good. <laughs> yeah, you, but if you put a little uh, 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 lemon in it, you know what? Then I'm gonna drink it all day, brother. You know what you just said. Uh, mm -hmm. Reminds me of words from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know, he's okay. met he's met with the rappers. I'm talking about your Fat Joe, mm -hmm. all of them. He met with them several times, and you know, one of the things that he did is that he guided those of us in the music industry that since you are so powerful with the words that you are conveying to mm -hmm. the youth, uh -huh. you have an impact on them. So he said, you know, brothers, the the message that you give. He did it in such a beautiful way, too, brothers. Mm -hmm. He said, "Now you, you. Some may look at it as dog food, but yeah. you put medicine in the dog food. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, that even though you give whatever is in your rap and whatever's in your message, you know, you shoot them up, bang, bang, kill them, sell all the dope that you want to. Yeah. But within that." Put something that's positive and uplifting, at least one of them tracks. Yes, most definitely. You know what most I mean? Definitely. That's that's yeah. gonna help raise the consciousness and vibration yeah. in people. So yeah. you you were exactly right. No, I love, said, it. I love it. Yes, I love it. I, I hit my brother Leno. <clears throat> Leno. Sure, I like that. Now when you listen to the hip hop music and you hear your shoot 'em up, bang, bang, mm -hmm. what do you do when a brother like Meek Mill drop his what we would call conscious or positive track. Do you I'm skip it use, or I'm do not you listen use Meek to Mill. Of course, I, I will. Yeah. I, there are times I yeah. do skip it, but I'm not. I'm gonna say not Meek Mill, right? Because yeah. I like Meek Mill, yeah. mm -hmm. but a common, right? Um, those type of artists that do have powerful voices yes, and sir. also put medicine in the 
you know, yeah, and yeah. make you understand that right. type of music, we mm-hmm. do tend to skip over those rappers Facts. because those rappers are not glorified. Right. Yeah. Facts. Just be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it is the guys with the guns, the girls, the right. drugs. Those mm-hmm. are what's enticing and what catches people. You know, our culture. That's eye. right. So yeah. at times we do need to switch over because I'm yeah. honored and excited to even have Mr. Sam X oh, just yes. so we can honest have mind, a conversation yeah. because we yes, do sir. at times need to be able to go on the other side of the fence also. That's right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. right. So, uh, Sam X, um, I want to start at the beginning, my brother. Yes, sir. You know, Let's for go. the people, for our audience, man, our beautiful audience, let yes, me say sir. that. <laughs> um, so, you're a member of the Nation of Islam. Yes, sir. Right? Um, how were you introduced to the Nation of Islam? Uh, brother, you know, I was introduced. That's a, that's a loaded question for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because the first time I, I really knew anything about the Nation of Islam, I actually watched, watched Malcolm X, the movie, Spike Lee. Okay, okay. okay. yeah. And so Great movie. The first time I saw that movie, as a, I'm nine, ten years old at the time. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a scene wherein Denzel playing Malcolm was in the jail cell. Mm-hmm. And he had a vision of, well, in the movie, it was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but in the actual autobiography, it was really Master Far Muhammad that he had the vision with. But nonetheless, okay. Oh, okay. in that instance, I'm going to tell you, as a nine-year-old child watching mm-hmm. that, I, I started tearing up and crying because I believe I was laying eyes on God. That's mm-hmm. what I saw to myself. Okay. So that was my first introduction. Mm-hmm. Um and when you say eyes on God, you're talking about uh, Far Muhammad or Elijah Muhammad? When I was looking at the, what he saw and the reverence that he okay. had for mm-hmm. what he saw and the, the, the sanctity and the, the really the purity of what mm-hmm. that, that scene conveyed, I thought I was looking at God. Instantly you, you felt you. connected to absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So that that shined the light on me for the first time. Okay. But my, my strongest introduction, quite honestly, is when I came to Tennessee. Okay. I came here to go to TSU. Okay. The real okay. TSU. Okay, the real uh, TSU. Yeah, the real TSU. Yeah, 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 I, came, yeah. I came here to go to yeah. TSU, Tennessee yeah. State. Okay. And, uh, you know, my roommate, and we were both from Chicago, and so he came with a suitcase full of books and I'm, I'm dating myself, but cassette tapes. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So audio cassette tapes. We uh, all on the same. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is 2001, right? Okay. I'm in school, and, and he pulled out a book called Message to the Black Man. Yes, sir. Hey, Great man. book. I saw yeah. immediately, I was like, all right, let me see what this talking about. Mm-hmm. I was already on a search for knowledge. Okay. So I opened up the book, mm-hmm. and in the book, immediately, the, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is going into this, who is this mystery God? And I'm just like, what? I ain't never, I, I was uh, appalled but intrigued at the same time. So I, c- yeah. I couldn't stop reading it. Mm-hmm. And my background was growing up in the Church of God in Christ. Okay. That, so, that, I was going to ask you that. You grew up Christian. I grew Christian, up in the right. church. Right, nice, nice. And so everything that I was taught growing up in the church was mm-hmm. challenged in the first few pages of this book. So while I'm opening up and reading it, I'm appalled and intrigued. I keep, but I couldn't stop turning the pages. Okay. But and me, this is when you was in college. This is in college. Okay. So now, mind you, I'm not one to accept stuff on face value. Okay. Like, I got I to gotta check it out some more. So mm-hmm. I kept. Reading and I'm like, let me maybe try research some other stuff. Mm-hmm. So as I did more research, the more research I did, mm-hmm. the more I found that I wasn't going to disprove what he said. I found more mm-hmm. things validating what he was saying. So I got to the point where I was like, man, I can't beat this. I'm gonna join it. Uh, yes. So yes, yes. what ended up happening is that on my campus, uh, in the third floor of the Floyd Payne Campus Center at Tennessee State University, uh, a student minister of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad came to speak on my okay. campus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there was a meeting. I didn't even know that there was a mosque here in Nashville. Mm. And so when he came and he spoke, I, I immediately, he, they asked questions at the end, you know, how many of you are here for your first time? Yeah, and I yeah, raised yeah. my hand and how many of you believe mm-hmm. that what you heard today is the truth and good for our people by a show of hands? I ra- Now, how many of you are ready to join with us in the nation yeah. of Islam? I, I stood up. I was <laughs> yeah. like, hey man, sign me up. Yeah. 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 And, and from that point forward, and then the, the guest speaker was uh, a minister who came out of New York back in the, the, the 60s. And okay. Now, he was, so he was an elder or what we call mm-hmm. a pioneer minister, but the minister of the mosque here in Nashville Mm-hmm. Historically, has been Minister Abdul Majid Muhammad. He was my my first minister. Your first minister, okay. And so he also was came into the Nation of Islam in 1960. And I remember when I first laid eyes on him, I said, "I got to help him." And uh, from that day, I signed up. Never looked back. This is 2002 at this point. Yeah. Nice. So here we are, 22 years later. Yeah. Because I'm still here. I want nice. to ask this right here. I want to go back nice. in what you were saying. 
You said at nine years old when you was watching the Malcolm X movie, yes, that's when you felt connected. Yes, sir. But you also say that you was raised in a different religion Absolutely. household, right? Absolutely. But how is that when you felt the connection, mm -hmm. but you also have different religion growing up? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's a good question, brother. Um, quite honestly, I was one of them. I was one of them ones. Okay. I was basically like, you know, it's it's a black sheep in every family. Yes, most definitely. And okay. I was the one, one to always one. <laughs> yeah. go against the grain. I grew mm -hmm. up, now mind you, the, the Kojic experience, if those of you listening to the audience that grew up in the Kojic or near it, mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about. It's church every day. Mm. You got you got usher board meetings, you got choir meetings, yeah. you got, yeah. I had to go. And it's every time. day. It's every day or something, you know. Yeah. So I was at church minimum four days a week growing up mm. as a little child. Up until the point where I got old enough, where I ain't have yeah. to. But and then we had on Sundays there were two services. You had a, a morning service mm -hmm. and an evening service. Yes, yes, yes sir. you did. Okay, yes, sir. so I was at all of that. Yes, sir. Now I always knew because I had questions when I would go to Sunday school. When I would, you know, they was telling me these stories in the Bible stuff. Just, mm -hmm. just didn't hit right with me sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how was it that, how was it that you telling me that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then he he made Adam and Eve. They had two children, mm -hmm. Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel. But now after he kills Abel, so that means that he the only sibling left. But he's asking God to now put a brand on him so that when he goes somewhere else, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be afraid that somebody would kill him. Like, well, who's going to kill you? You killed your only okay, option. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Most then on top yeah. of that, now he goes and he f goes into another land called Nod and he marries a woman. So is that your sister? Like, wh who, where yeah, did she come yeah, from? So yeah, I would ask yeah. these type of questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the, the people teaching, they, they didn't know how to answer. So yeah. don't yeah. question God. Yeah, don't question yeah, God. Don't question God. Like, That's right, the first defense right. of what mm -hmm. any, so yeah. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm questioning you. you you're teaching this you're class, teaching so I'm this. trying to get some understanding. And so there were things and several things that I saw that were conflicting within the scriptures that were contradictory. Mm -hmm. And I would ask these questions. So I was the one, I was, my mind was already wired mm -hmm. to, to try to make sense of things. Mm -hmm. And I never could make sense of these things, even though I love my church and I love my background and experience and still to this day love my church family. Yeah. However, I knew that that was not what I was Where looking you want, for. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. I knew that is there this was, in yeah. Chicago also? Yes, sir. This yeah. is at this point, this church is in the west suburbs of Chicago in okay. Aurora. So, so I, okay. yes, sir. No, so, so growing up in Chicago, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So yeah. growing up in Chicago, mm -hmm. is that dominated religion Muslim? No, uh, okay. in, it's Christian. In, in, right. Now in Chicago, in, in particular, um, you know, it is heavy, heavy, heavy Christian influence. Mm -hmm. Which, in most, you know, this is a what they call a Judeo-Christian society here in America, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. ultimately, you know, you you find churches, you know, especially in now the black community, church liquor store, church, church liquor store, yeah, on yeah, every yeah, corner, so, on every corner, every yeah. corner, right? And uh, so we would, I was always in church somewhere, somewhere in somebody's yeah. church somewhere, but mm -hmm. nonetheless, um, now in Chicago is where the Nation of Islam is headquarters. Mm -hmm. So our national headquarters are located in Chicago. So there's a heavy influence yeah, of okay. Islam in Chicago. Uh, and, and on the south side in particular, that's 93% black. Mm. So it's it's really in a very position, you know, position very central to where the black community is in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But it's churches everywhere. Yeah. Right. And, uh, yes, you sir. know, he said south side. That's, yeah. that's yeah. old block 63rd. You yeah, know yeah. about yeah. that. Don't I'm from 63rd. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. I'm nah. from 63rd. Uh, I had, I, but I want to ask you, um, how did your family receive um, Most definitely. I, I that's what your I was conversion yeah. into Islam? How did your Christian so family What we uh, call it, that? and you know, the thing about Islam, uh, my brother, we're taught in the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that mm -hmm. you don't convert to Islam. Okay. Uh, he teaches us that you are accepting your own and becoming yourself because he teaches us that Islam is the nature that we were created in because Islam is not a religion. It's actually, okay. it's describing your nature. Islam means peace. It means submission to the will of God. Okay. So when Islam is just an Arabic word that describes an action, and your action is always to be in submission to God. So we don't convert; we just accept our own and be ourselves. Okay, so you but, don't convert; you just accept right, yourself. You okay. accept yourself. You just becoming yourself. Nice. Mm -hmm. But when I did that, mm -hmm. to answer your question, my brother, mm -hmm. um, and immediately my mother, uh, bless her heart, mm -hmm. uh, she was not too happy. I yeah. hit it with the double whammy. Yeah, because I, I I came into the nation of Islam in college, mm -hmm. so I I left home. And never went back. And I called her. I, I dropped out of school, 
Oh, 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 and oh Sam. Sam. I hit him with the. Oh, I say, yeah. I'm like, look, if I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna hit you at the same time with everything. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like, hey, my. Um, so yeah, I ain't coming home again. I hit it with the, the coming to America. Yeah. Hey, I ain't coming home again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, I'm 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 in the nation of Islam. Yeah. So she she was needless to say, uh, very jarred. But this is me and my adolescence. I'm 19 years old mm-hmm. at the time, yeah. and so I just just told her how I felt it. Uh, so mm-hmm. you know, she thought it was a phase. Of course. Most definitely. Yeah, of course. I'll tell you, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think, yeah, you all parents feel you'll like gr- that. You'll grow out of it. You'll yeah. grow out of it. You know, you go yeah. away to school and you yeah. get around, you know, HBCU yeah. culture. Yeah. You just learn and try to figure yeah. it out. But no, I was, I, I meant what I said. Yeah. And so for what that being said, it, it was a, it was an adjustment uh, mm-hmm. because it, then, then again, my demonstration was a little forceful. I, mm-hmm. I wasn't as poised yeah. back then. I'm young, man. Yeah, so, I'm young. You know, I'm, I'm kind of wild yeah. a little bit. So I, 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 was, yeah. I, was, I was braggadocious with it. You know yeah. what I mean? And so my attitude was, I know what I'm in and y'all wrong. I'm ready mm-hmm. to go in the house and throw away all the pork and do everything. Yeah. But, but, uh, <laughs> see, them the ones, yeah. them the <laughs> ones <laughs> see, them the ones that I see a lot and I yeah. be like at yeah. times, yeah. it's like forced on you yeah. right after that. Because right. you do want to listen, right. like I'm one of those guys that I like. I do want to listen, right. even mm-hmm. if I'm not going to um, convert over, right. like or accept, be accepted. Right. I still want to be able to learn it. That's right. Um, right. A lot of guys in my culture that I grew up with um, go in and out of the prison yeah. system, mm-hmm. jail system, and stuff like yeah. that, and some come home. Some go in as mm-hmm. a Baptist, Christian, or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they'll come back and they'll right. be Muslim, mm-hmm. right. and it'll be in your face. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. no, look, yeah. y'all been wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is what this yeah, is, yeah. and it's and it's forced, right? Yeah, brother. And see what you what you just stated, man, is is uh, you you are absolutely right. And this is the beauty that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us. He teaches us this that you are not to condemn your people. He said okay. he said this. He says that the sun does not condemn the filth that is in the water that's on the earth. Mm-hmm. The sun shines on it, and mm-hmm. then it raises up the water, and it purifies it as it's raising it up. Then it charges it back to the earth in the form of pure rain. Mm. So essentially, that is our work. Mm-hmm. Our work is a redemptive work. So our job mm. is not to condemn you where you are. Mm. Not to job, tear you down, basically, right? right? You, you put a clean glass next to a dirty glass, you don't have to tell people which one to drink. Obviously, when you see something that's clean, so you, your representation, your demonstration of what you believe is a, sends a stronger mm. message and teaches better than any words that can come out of your mm. mouth. So yeah. ultimately, it's not about condemning you where you are because guess what? Mm. Yesterday, I was with you. Yes, most definitely. That's why we don't mm-hmm. take them serious, bro. Yeah, when, exactly. When they come like, dude, you, we was in the trap the other day. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What yeah, are you definitely. talking about? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You just got home. Yeah, yeah. you got right. in trouble. Right. I, like, because my mind frame would be like, okay, <laughs> right. you got in trouble. Right. You went. You know, they had to go lay down. You was bored. Right. You know what I'm saying? And now you're coming home and you're right. in my face with it. Yeah. But I'm going to say another thing. Then the culture of prison, being a Muslim is looked at as a, as a gang. Mm-hmm. How is that totally the opposite? Well, one yeah. thing is, uh, I could tell you because I, I used to work as a correctional officer. I have a security background, too. Okay, cool. So while I was in there and while I was training, mm-hmm. Uh, down in Tullahoma, where they train all the Tennessee mm-hmm. correction okay. officers, they were teaching the correctional officers that Nation of Islam is a security threat group, but it's technically not, but it really is. So they were mm-hmm. already subjectively planting in the mind of the correctional officers mm, that it's a security mm. group. Mm. Uh, yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah. but they had to they had to give the disclaimer. It's technically not, but it really is. But it really is most so definitely. So that they will come in with the attitude that when you see the nation of Islam in the prisons, treat them like a gang. Like the Crips and Bloods, pretty Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Mm. Now you have brothers that essentially now the the the, the way that our structure is set up mm-hmm. in the institutions, uh we're the same group that produced the Malcolm X. We're the same Absolutely. group that produced some of the greatest minds that have come out. And actually, the Nation of Islam's prison reform has the lowest recidivism rate mm. when it comes to its impact on those who receive these type of teachings and they come out. Very mm. few go back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so with that being said, mm-hmm. that don't sound like the work of a gang. No, most definitely that, it don't. That, that's, this is yes. a redemptive work. Yes. I because love I brothers love that are in the institutions, mm-hmm. they are instructed to live the same lifestyle that we are living out here to the best mm-hmm. of their ability. Mm-hmm. They are instructed to live that life and they accept it, not mm-hmm. forcefully, but they willingly do it because we have something in the nation of Islam called the restrictive law of Islam. Mm-hmm. The restrictive law doesn't restrict you from 
uh, having fun or from being yourself. It restricts you from committing behavior that will cause you to leave this earth too soon. Mm. So essentially, yeah. things that we are putting doing yourself that are at high risk. Ourselves. Yeah, putting exactly. yourself at high risk. We're restricting that behavior because we're we are de designed to protect the life that God has given us. Mm -hmm. So in the institution, whether it be inside or out, you know, inside of the belly of the beast, as they call it, brother. You know, it is a particular work that is done to show them how to live a better life so that when and if they have the opportunity to come out, mm -hmm. they can be even more successful on the outside than they were on the inside. Let me ask you this, Sam X. So now you said uh, when you guys go. So so let me get this straight. So like the, the, the prison, the prison reform uh, a, a group of the Nation of Islam, they go into prisons yes, sir. and talk to people. Absolutely. Uh, I guess give the people one key or two keys or two major important <laughs> yeah. points that you tell these guys when you walk into that prison yes, sir. to uh, uh, help them brothers out well brother you know the main thing that we are giving the brothers uh, in there are study guys that were produced by the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan called self-improvement the basis for community development okay. okay so in there you know we're discussing and teaching brothers the aspects of building human potential we're teaching and it starts with the first study guide is mixed feelings and controversy. How do we handle it? Mm. These are real life subjects, Absolutely. right? Building the will. There's four parts to that. You know, we're talking about hypocrisy and conspiracy, dealing with all aspects of real life mm -hmm. to teach them how to live their lives more effectively. We're giving mm. them manhood principles because essentially many of our brothers who go in, especially young, they go in from the mindset that they learned in the hood, mm -hmm. which is really it's not really a masculine mindset. It comes from a... It's still a child. It's still absolutely. a child. 12, absolutely. 13, 14 you know, year old mind it, it, It's really still. some some what they call epsilon male type of mentality where being overly aggressive and, and yeah. having to flaunt and flex on everything, yeah. that ain't that's not genuine masculinity. So we're yeah. teaching manhood principles because the FOI, it means the fruit of Islam, the name given to the military training of the men who belong to Islam in North America. Mm -hmm. So with those are the principles that are being given to the men to make them a better version of who they used to be. That is essentially what's being taught. Nice. About. I nice. like the man principles, like yeah. you nice. said, because it's it's from just the outside looking in, right? I always looked at you guys as um like if you're gonna be a Muslim, Muslims carry themselves a totally different way. Yes, sir. And I like what you said is that when you, you know, when you are a Muslim, you're gonna act accordingly basically that's right. right it's going that's to right. be so what happens to people that don't act accordingly that's a muslim like do you guys bring them closer talk to them well, brother, or kick know, them out well brother <laughs> the, the 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 goal is never to kick out gotcha. the goal you know we have an expression in islam is that i want for my brother what i want for myself okay so anytime my brothers you know we all fall short most definitely you know so we we, we do what we call pull, pull let me pull your coattail Right? Okay. So if a brother is, is doing something he don't need to do, mm -hmm. it's my job as your brother because I love you and I want for you what I want myself. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, l let me talk to you for a second. Yeah. You pull your brother to the side. I'm not finna go broadcast this because I'm not... I ain't with that energy. I'm yeah. not finna go tell everybody. Did you see what yeah. he did? Yeah. I think yeah. that's what people yeah. don't listen, right? When nah. when you go and broadcast, nobody Absolutely. wanna listen. So yeah. no, nah, it's my job and my duty as your brother that if I see you falling short mm -hmm. and I can be of assistance to help you to pull you closer mm -hmm. and hey, man, Straighten this out, chief. Like, you know, as a, as a brother to help you correct your behavior. Now, you know, if brothers continue on a certain path, you know, we do have structure in the nation of Islam. Yes. Mm. So if you if we were to keep violating, there is a process for that. But brother, the goal is ultimately just to help us improve in our behavior. Got you. That's Got it. you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No, and, I wrong know, with that. and I know that uh, 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 the um, Honorable Minister Farrakhan is uh, um, vital. To, um, to this organization, you know, to this movement, this way of life. Um, have you ever met um, uh, the minister? Brother, I've been blessed to meet the minister. Yes, sir, I have. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. What, what was that experience yes. like? Break Brother, that down. Let me tell you something, man. Um, any and every time I had the opportunity to meet the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it is a life-altering experience. There was more than one? The, the, yes, sir. Oh, the, okay. the, the, the first time I had the opportunity to meet the minister, honestly, was... 2010 I, sh I was uh I had a chance to go on stage and shake him for something that shake his hand and uh, not shake him yeah, yeah I was gonna say what, 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 what <laughs> Lord no don't, don't let me get that straight right yeah, away shake, shake his, his hand, hand. most yeah. definitely uh, and I had the opportunity to to do that uh then but the where I formally met him was when he came to uh well we attempted to bring him to TSU 
mm-hmm. uh, in April of 2012. And the school, my, my beloved alma mater, they at first said that he can come, and then they said he couldn't, then they said he could, then they said he couldn't. Okay. So we end up having security to to, issues. No, it was uh, issues. They were being pressured okay. from, from from government entities not gotcha. to allow the minister on the campus. Yeah, gotcha. So we ended up having to go to Jefferson gotcha. Street Baptist Church. Okay. Uh, so okay. I ended up having the opportunity to meet him then. But just ultimately, brother, that experience, um, I can tell you that he possesses an aura, my brother, mm-hmm. yeah. that his energy is so amazing. Like you literally feel as if you are in the presence of divinity. He doesn't have, he has such a humble spirit. Mm. Not not fake humble, genuine genuinely humble. humble. Where you know that he is honored to meet you. Where he where you know that yeah, you can he, feel he, it. he is he mm. is just as excited to see you as you are to see him. Yeah. Mm. And every moment that I had the opportunity to spend with him, if it's at dinner, I'm gonna tell you, he's teaching the entire time. He is imparting wisdom and he's doing what the elders are supposed to do. Absolutely. Yes. That is to lift up yeah. the young people. He's watering and the seed. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So he is he is spending hours at his table watering and watering and feeding the people. So it is an absolute amazing experience. And I will say that those are experiences that I would cherish for the rest of my entire life. And I and there are things that he said to me in certain meetings, brothers, that are still revealing to me right now gotcha. on this day things that he said to me over 10 years ago that man it makes sense mm-hmm. now because mm-hmm. you're dealing with somebody that's so wise that he'll plant a seed that's deep enough that it'll manifest and actually come to harvest at the right time mm-hmm. that's the experience it's big mm-hmm. because like you said nine years old right yeah watching even though it was hollywood but right you understood the message right yeah and 2010 yeah. and now you actually get the Shake hands, I'm huge, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's Most huge. Definitely. Absolutely. That's huge. I, I got a question for you. So you said all of these uh, beautiful things about the minister, but if we go on to social media or we watch uh, mainstream mm-hmm. news, they will make him seem like a bad guy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, brother. Yes, in, in your opinion, where do you think all of this hate or disgust comes from against the minister? Brother, that is a wonderful question. I'm eager to answer. (laughs) So here's the thing. How was Jesus received in his time? Mm, When you read in the book of Matthew and you read throughout Mm -hmm. the gospel, Mm -hmm. you had, there were apparent enemies that were listed in the scripture. There were Sadducees, Pharisees, and Sanhedrin, or Sanhedrin, depending on how you say it. Uh, (laughs) But one of those groups were called the scribes, Mm -hmm. right? So the scribes come from the word scribo, which Mm -hmm. means I write. These were the journalists of that time. This was CNN, ABC, At that time, yeah. (laughs) yeah. So here's the thing. How did they write about Jesus in his day? Now, here it is. He's performing miracles. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's causing the blind to see. He's, he's making the he's deaf healing hear. people. He's healing people. Yes. He's cleansing the leper, right? Yes. But the scribes mm-hmm. are sending the words out mm-hmm. to the people that he's some hate monger. Now, if you take, you look at just the book of John and you put that and do what, what CNN does and what Fox does today, right? Mm-hmm. Or what ABC does today. They put a, imagine a 60 second sound bite from Jesus mm-hmm. in his time. That the what they did to Jesus two thousand years ago is mm-hmm. what they're doing to a man who's walking in the footsteps of Jesus two thousand years later. So the work that he has done has been performative. The people in the community know. No. Everybody who has benefited, those who have sat, mm-hmm. they know that what they said about him on these news periodicals or it's, on the it's t- totally false. When you see it for yourself, you know it's false. Yeah, you know. So it's that false. lets you know that you're dealing with an enemy who are writing about him and speaking about him online or on social media, they're making him look as if he Mm -hmm. is an enemy, but he is the greatest friend that we could ever have because anybody that will tell you the truth and anybody that would do it in a manner as passionate as he and does it in a way that you can accept it, that is the best friend that you can ever have. Nice, nice. Okay. um, it's, it's um, it's Ramadan, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes, sir. It's Ramadan. Uh oh. All right, now for the people, um, I guess give 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 our audience a, a quick rundown of what Ramadan what, is. Yeah, what Ramadan? Yes, sir. Is, Man, Ramadan is a beautiful time. It is a time in which Muslims all over the world, nearly two billion, and mm-hmm. those who are also observing who may not be Muslim by practice, mm-hmm. are observing Ramadan, wherein this is the month that it has been uh, believed, of course, that 
uh, the Holy Quran was first revealed to Prophet Muhammad okay. in the month of Ramadan. And in that, not the entire book, but the first revelation, it took 23 years for the entire Quran to be revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Okay. So during the daylight hours, uh, in observance of that, mm -hmm. what we are instructed and guided and blessed to do is to abstain from things that are natural to us, such as during the daylight hours from the dawn prayer to the evening or from to the uh, sunset prayer, which is called Makhrib, mm -hmm. we are fasting. We don't drink any water. You need water to live. Yeah, most definitely. But we're abstaining from it. Uh, we abstain from eating food. You need food to live, but we abstain mm. from that. And also sexual relations with your spouses. You oh, need oh, count see, me out. Count you, me see, out, I didn't know man. that. Count you, me you out, food, Sam. You, you need that to live, too, right? Yeah, yeah. well, right. You, you, uh, need, you, yeah. Need, you need. No, you need that yeah, to yeah, live. Most definitely. Right? <laughs> okay, we're going to keep it a stack here. Yeah, 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 it's now, the thing is, now, why do we do that? Now, these are things that you absolutely need, right? These are human needs. Not just urges, but needs. If we can get that under control, think about the things mm. that are unnatural. See, if we can master self-discipline yeah, through that's, fasting, mm. we can stop lying. Yeah. Most definitely. We can, oh, that's hard for we, me. We can stop stealing. Man, I'm a big liar, <laughs> man. God. We, we, can, we, can stop, we can stop talking bad about one another. Most definitely. Things that are unnatural to us that we do, the whole thing of disciplining self and, 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 and practicing self-mastery allows us to gain control over ourselves mm. so that way we can stop doing the things that hinder our progress and our success. So Ramadan is the time wherein we have the opportunity to work on that. It's much deeper spiritual of the meaning. Well, I mean, I like, how, I like how you put but, it though. Ramadan yeah. is basically yeah. something that starts right here and That's it's right. something mentally get you, like you said, the, not the urges yeah. or the things that you can't live without. It, make, it discipline you. That's you. right. It's a spiritual yeah. reset. Yeah. Every I year. love it. My, I love my it. favorite, my, my, I got a Ramadan story, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we all the same age. Like Kim Elijah won. Yeah, okay. yeah. Y'all remember Kim yeah, Elijah yeah, won game? Yeah. The dream. The, the yeah, dream, the right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I tell, I'm a big sports fan. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So I tell a lot of people this about a Kim Elijah one because we talk about Michael Jordan flu game, uh -huh. um, Isaiah Thomas ankle game yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nobody talk about Hakeem Elijah one during Ramadan mm -hmm. when yeah. he was in the NBA Finals. That's right. And he scored 55 points without drinking water That's right. or eating. Or eating. Yeah. That's right. And I don't know if this was true. But how the sportscaster was announcing it was like when they was doing timeout, and he played the whole he played the whole game. Right. Okay. This, this, okay. This the NBA he played the whole forty eight gotcha. minutes, gotcha. and he couldn't. He wasn't drinking. And of course, you know he couldn't eat, but he was yeah. wiping his face out like this. Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't. Fully, I mean, I'm just that's, that's my biggest yeah. Ramadan. Yeah. I'm like, God, this man ain't drunk no water, or yeah. nothing, and he don't score yeah. 55 points at a right. professional level yeah. elite game. Kyrie just did that. Now there was that when uh, one of the games maybe a couple of years ago during Ramadan. Most they, definitely, he did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Kyrie did the same thing. And I mean, that, yeah, I'm absolutely. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's discipline. That's yeah, that's discipline. very, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm yeah. piggybacking yeah. off of what Sam that's Max said. Discipline. It's the discipline that's part because I feel like, yeah, a lot of times, man, a lot of guys, I feel like. That's not Muslim because I know a lot of people that want to be Muslim, mm -hmm. right? I know a lot of people that um, go by the Muslim beliefs, mm -hmm. but a lot of them that go by the Muslim beliefs is picky, traditional what right. they like. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, pick these choose. three, right. but I ain't all want to do yeah, them two. Do them that. them yeah, two right yeah, there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, brother, you know Jesus says uh, that you know you you can't come lukewarm. You, you mm. gotta either be hot or cold. I like uh, that. So I like that. again, you know, and this like is no that. judgment to brothers mm -hmm. because again, there are things that I struggle with. I don't, okay. you know, it wasn't I, easy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, one meal a day is a law for us. And mm. I ain't gonna say I did one meal a day all the time. Yeah, Shoot, yeah. It's, it can it struggle at times. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, <clears throat> the practice and the discipline that we incorporate during this time helps us so that we we not just doing it just for a month. But we continue this through it our daily lives. Mm, I was yeah. I was looking forward to Ramadan. Oh, okay. I'm okay. looking forward because I you know when you start getting a little out of pocket, yeah, getting yeah, out of yeah, control. Yeah, yeah. you need something need to bring that. you back in. Gotcha. I need gotcha. that because I love myself better when I'm more disciplined. Yes. So I, yes. I definitely love mm. it. No, I love it. I love it. All right, now, uh, Leno, Great conversation. I love it. And Leno, yeah. you know this is a music podcast. Most definitely. Let me tell you what I seen one day. So I'm scrolling down Instagram, minding my business. <laughs> okay. You know, not, you not nosy, bothering though. nobody. He's nosy. I see Sam X. Uh-huh. Was this an album cover that I was yeah, seeing, Sam yeah, X? Yeah, 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 I yeah, mean, yeah. he had this, was it a sweater or a shirt <clears throat> or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, Sam X done uh, put out some music. Are you on Light like Now before? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes so, sir. I mean, yeah. uh, so you most definitely hip. But we at this <laughs> age, you were yeah. hip hop here. So right? talk yeah. about us. I mean, what what when was that? Was was that before the nation or when was this in your uh, life, Sam? Before and during. Uh, so okay. so ultimately, uh, get quick back back backdrop on that because uh, brother, you be making me forget. Yeah, I forgot I did music. Uh, yeah, yeah, like I legit was out here yeah. in these streets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing music. I was doing shows, New York, yeah. Chicago, all of that. Yeah. So, oh, so you were good. I I, 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 had some bars. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. some bars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, man, it's many moons ago. But mm -hmm. uh, so so essentially, I started uh, with poetry, okay. and I used to do poetry, and I didn't even know I could really like do it until I performed it. Mm -hmm. I would just be writing in my little pad, mm -hmm. and then one day uh, on campus, first time I performed it was on campus at TSU. And the AKAs, they had a um, like a talent show. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me just sign up and see what. Did a little joint, and when I got off, like as soon as I ended in, like everybody just stood up and was like, <sighs> you know. So yeah, it was yeah. like, oh, okay, I, I'm guess I'm, I guess I was yeah, nice. I guess yeah, yeah. Then it turned into me uh, just start writing the music, and then around 2005 or six, I want to say 06 is when I really started like recording music. Uh, and so I, you know, mostly local and next thing you know, um, people start hearing me and then I start getting picked up on little blogs here and there in like the 2010 era. And then interesting thing that happened is, um, I got to the point to where my music was being played on, um, at the time, you know, Angela Yee, before she joined the Breakfast Club, she had her own show on Shade 45. Yeah, okay. most yeah. Yep, she, 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 so, did. she did. She had a segment called Don't Quit Your J Day Job. Mm-hmm. So basically, these were rappers from all over the country who would come on and put their music on. Yeah. And the people would judge it. Mm -hmm. Every I went on her show twice, both times. Uh, I was scored, like, very high. Yeah, yeah. Most so yeah. it was they, being received yeah. well. And I went on another show. And then my show would be on, my, my, my music would be on some shows in Chicago. Here. So I wasn't, like, big or anything. Yeah. But I was, yeah. I was doing, you was making catching momentum. Yeah, you yeah. was catching I, I, momentum. I was, I was gaining momentum. Yeah. And um, what ended up happening is that at a certain point, uh, my management team got in contact with some A&Rs who were, had relationships with V103 in Chicago. Okay. okay. They came to my management and said, hey, uh, my rap name was Concise. Okay. Concise. Yeah. So they, they came to my management team and said, hey, he dope, but um, we can get him a deal. But tell him, ask him if he can dumb his music down. They literally mm. asked me to dumb my music down because mm. it was too conscious. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. I was I was I was yeah. one of them rapidy rap guys. So okay. Yeah. So because of that, because I wasn't uh, selling a million dollars worth of dope every 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 uh, every song, hour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my God. You know what I mean? It was you know they asked me to dumb it down yeah. to make it more palatable so mm. they can put me out there and promote me because I had mm. the other appeal stuff to it, but it just otherwise content. It wasn't enough for that, which let me know, you know, there's an agenda. Absolutely, oh, most definitely, Absolutely. yeah, most definitely. So that was that, brother. So that that project that you saw was yeah. called "Why He Ain't Signed Yet," because that would literally be the question that people would ask. Why you like, ain't, why signed, ain't yet? signed yet? Mm -hmm. They would hear me yeah. like this dude. So we did a a, a, a mixtape. It started off as an EP, then it turned into a mix. Jake Jones, who used to be here, uh, a one on one. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, did yeah, yeah. Mixtape for yeah. me, and uh, so yeah. no, that was that was that. So that that was my little rap history. Nah, that's good well, shit. That's yeah. good <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> uh, so real quick, I want to play a game right now. Okay. I came up with this game, man. Right for my brother. Right for my brother. That um, you know, um, that speak. So are you? Uh, I'm not gonna say fluent, but are you pretty good with your uh, Arabic, my brother? Arabic, I, I can I can. Pray Pray, you know, a few prayers in Arabic. I'm not fluent in Arabic at all. Okay. Well, I'll say this. I'll say this. So this this game is called Rate My Arabic. Okay. All right. I got some okay. words. I got some words. <laughs> Let's you, go. Brother. I got brother, some you words. Might you might know more than me when you read this right, word. All right. Yeah. All right. And I typed it just the way I said it too. <laughs> Assalamualaikum. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Asa, hold on. Asa, oh, man, fuck it. Just let me let me not read it. Assalamualaikum. Yes, sir. Peace be unto you. Okay. Now, how was that? How was Assalamu alaikum. That's that's correct. That's a assalamu greeting, alaikum. right? Yeah, that is the greeting. Yes. That's, okay. Yes. And what does that what does that mean? So, peace be unto you. So the word assalamu alaikum mm -hmm. means peace be unto you. That's okay. also how Jesus, if you read in the Bible, how he greeted everybody, peace mm -hmm. be unto you. He said mm -hmm. assalamu alaikum. Yeah. And I okay. say uh, wa alaikum salam. 
Wa alaikum salam, and unto you be peace. Okay. That's what it means. That's what it means. All right. Is that, uh, okay, when is so, that said? So when I say to you, if I greet you mm -hmm. and I say, as salam alaikum, mm -hmm. you will say, wa alaikum salam. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Yes, sir. And uh, inshallah. Inshallah. If it be the will of God, that's what it means. Inshallah. Okay. Yes, inshallah. Yes, sir. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is, I like this one, though. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Um, brother. Am I saying that one right? First, you, you, first and foremost. First and foremost, yeah. you 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 got it pretty. Okay. It's, Almost. It's, it's yeah. Yeah, he yeah, said, yeah, 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 yeah. But but, but yes, sir. Yes, What's sir. the correct pronunciation? No, you 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 got it. You okay. got it. Got it yes, sir. Yes, All right. Sir. And what does that mean? Now, it's it's stop for law is brother. Uh, if you didn't ask me, I would tell you. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, I thought it was some bad. No, you it's, it's, I was like, oh it's, man, it's uh, it's basically it's it's correcting, brother. Help me out, brothers. What yeah. uh, stuff for Allah? For Allah. Uh, I know it has like a negative connotation to way. it. Yeah, <laughs> I know it has like a uh, oh, negative, negative connotation to it because it's like a stuff for Allah. It's basically asking Allah to pardon. Yeah, yeah. So if you make a mistake, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. for Allah. yeah. Typically, that's done if a brother is praying, mm -hmm. and let's say he make a mistake in the prayer, yeah. he would say, "I stop for a lot." It's mm -hmm. it's essentially okay. correcting the the error that was made. Okay, mm -hmm. and the last one, yeah. and this is the one I struggle with though. Ahum, uh, uh, ahum de la la. Alhamdulillah. Okay, al alhamdulillah. Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. It, it essentially means praise belongs to God. All okay. praises belong to God. Okay. All right. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, that was my game. That yeah. was my game, bro. And these are <laughs> I words. Like that. But you did these are good, good though. You did good. Yeah. These are my. These are good, words though. that I really. I didn't just Google because yeah. I be on. You know, I be on my yeah. YouTube. When you live said he streams. had a game for you, I looked at him yeah. like, oh <laughs> man, like man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah cause I, you know, yeah, yeah. I be on my YouTube live streams. Yeah. And it's yeah. a lot of. Uh, I be on yeah. re religious. I be in yeah. religious conversation. And it's no, a lot you, of you, 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 Muslims and yeah, he actually done a good job. Come on to the fold, man. You got halfway there. Watch, he gonna talk to me the whole car ride home. Watch. Man, I don't like, know, man. Stop for that. All, right. <laughs> yeah. All right, now I gotta ask you this one. Uh, um, this is what I ask everybody, man. Uh, before we wrap this up, is um, you uh, I, I, I see the I see the band on your finger, my man. So uh, I already know you're married, yes, right? Sir. You're married. Um, I of course I am not married, yes, right? Sir. But hopefully I want to be married one yes, day, sir. man. So if you could give me some advice on my journey to find you know, uh, Mrs. McGee, yeah. what advice would you give oh, me, brother? Oh, brother, man, look here. I'm still learning uh, okay. myself, but let me tell you what I've learned. I'm not qualified to tell you what to do. I, I can more so tell you things to avoid. Yeah, and I can tell you also what I've learned in my experience because um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that as men, men are the maintainers of women. Uh, the Holy Quran says that uh, in Surah chapter four that we are the maintainers. But in order to maintain something, you have to understand it. Mm. The only way you can do that is by understanding yourself. Now, in looking, a woman, see, she is supposed to be your help me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in order for her to be your help me, you have to know what she's to help you with. And the only way you can do that is to study yourself that you have a mate or that will help meet your goals in life by studying what's going to be complementary for you. You want somebody that's complementary as well as compatible. There's there's a difference. Mm, big deal, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So so compatible. You know, you like some of the same stuff, right? You mm, like you, music, you, right? You like the, you you have many similarities. That means that your relationship will be able to be friendly and mm -hmm. cordial and, and fun. That's cool. But you can have somebody that's compatible, but they're not complementary. So therefore, they won't help you grow in grow. life. Most definitely, someone who is complementary will also be in a position where the things that you are weak in, they're strong and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you you complement each other in a sense to where you are able to cover down where she is short and vice versa. You need someone, brother, where in your, your areas of help, essentially that's what you're looking for, someone who can cover down on those areas, someone who helps to balance you, yes. someone who helps to anchor you and keep you grounded and help keep you focused because that very work right there, brother, anything that you're doing, especially in the redemptive work of our people, you need someone to help keep you fighting in that because a woman's Absolutely. job, brother, her, she going to keep you, you know, you when you come from a hard day work of catching hell as a black man in America mm -hmm. and you come home, you need a woman that's going to help 
clean you up in a way and help lift your spirits to make you ready to go out and fight another day. Yes. Most definitely. That's essentially what you're looking for, brother. That That is my the best advice that I can give you that my teacher has taught me. No, That's great. I love it. I love it. Brother. Most definitely, Sam. I like that. Hey, this this has been fun, brother. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it every time Thank we link you, up. Brother. I see you got some books. Yeah. Tell the people about the books you got, so my I, man. I brought books because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, um, mm-hmm. you know, he gave a, an incredible message mm-hmm. this past Savior's Day. Uh, the the subject was what does Allah and the Great Mahdi and the Great Messiah have to say about the war in the Middle East. And he is instructing us to study some books to give us some insight. This first book here was a book that Brother Malcolm X used to carry around. It's called We Charge Genocide, the Crime of Government Against the Negro People. Now, essentially Mm -hmm. in here, it details the atrocity. This was presented to the United Nations and they presented this and it was detailed in this book that goes through and shows how we have been targeted and targeted really for genocide. This. by our mistreatment here by our own government mm-hmm. and it details that and this was presented and put mm-hmm. forth to the United Nations. So that's uh, the, the genocide or mistreatment of the American Negro. That's right. Gotcha. Absolutely. Gotcha. Gotcha. Not only um, primarily American okay. but throughout the world. Okay. okay. But the genocide yeah. in particular was presented to the United Nations about the treatment that we received from the American government. Absolutely. So this was okay. put together Ozzie Davis. Mm, uh, you know yeah. he, he wrote the foreword in the book uh, or, or the preface rather so that was one book. Okay. Uh, another book that I bought is something that the minister told us to study was called The Palestine Laboratory. Oh, this was written shucks. by, a, and this is how Israel exports the technology of occupation around the world. This was written okay. by a, a Jewish uh, journalist, uh-huh. and he uh, was detailing, exact because he lived in Israel, he mm-hmm. was talking about his experience and shared exactly how the government operates throughout the world and in its own country. So this is a book that we were told to okay, study. Two good, powerful and books. And there was another book he told us to get called Rise and Kill First. And this was a book uh, detailing the assassinations uh, that have come through the Israeli government and through basically governments throughout the world who mm. were targeting people and the, essentially the murderous plots that have taken place to overthrow governments. Uh, so these were books that we are were encouraged to study because it gives us insight to what we see taking place right, right now. Right now, what we see today. Oh, I love it. Yes, I love sir, it. Most I definitely. love it. So, Brother Sam, tell the people, man, how they can follow you. How can they hear your message? Um, any closing words that you really want to make sure that you tell uh, our people while they uh, watching and listening to this, brother? Yes, sir. Well, thank you again, my brothers, uh, well, for, for having me here. It's always an honor to share with you what I've gained as a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I don't have any teachings, but I am a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And ultimately, I will, I always am sharing those teachings that that have transformed, literally transformed my life. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to know where they can find Muhammad Mosque number 60, Mm -hmm. uh, we are located uh, presently at 607 West Due West Avenue, which is in Madison, not too far from here. So you're Um, not on uh, Buckhannon anymore? No, sir. No, sir. We're not on Buchanan. Buckhannon, I should say. I know I'm in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to remember. He said Buchanan. Nah, Buckhannon. I got to remember where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, Buckhannon. So we're not on Buckhannon no more. No, sir. And uh, But ultimately, we're there for for the time being. We are in a position. We're looking to secure secure um, a space that will be able to be suitable for a not only a mosque but also a school as well oh, okay. uh, so we, nice. we, we 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 working on that and of course the people you know it's for the people people can definitely help and support with mm-hmm. that uh, ultimately they can find me online on social media um, on my Facebook page it's uh, Samuel X Gray uh, is the Facebook page and you can find me on Instagram uh, it is brother underscore Samuel underscore X. Uh, I think I got a TikTok with the same name. I don't really do that. <laughs> okay, that yeah. But okay. uh, in Twitter, same thing, brother Samuel X. So uh, that's where you can find me. Those are the handles, mm-hmm. my brother. Yeah, well, so. I'm gonna say this, man. So happy to have you on. Thank so you. Happy, happy to for be you. Here. And I'm just, just, just shining the light and talking about the discipline and just talking about your upbringing and how you. Got, felt a connection at nine years old, and just how you stood up and said, "This is what you really wanted to do." Yes, sir. Um, happy to have you on. Man. We Honored, as a team, we talked about this. I was like, "Yo, I'm just happy." Yeah. I, I like I said, listen, <laughs> tell, tell, tell about walk, the, tell listen. about them guys off off, off camera. I, like, I, I, I yeah. some guys off camera, man. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I've been like this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they, I, but now nah, I came in. <laughs> 
and I seen these guys, and I was like, what, what is it? You know what I'm saying? What about is it? They ain't got to be tied up kid, to it, man. Yeah, they kid kid Taylor. <laughs> they but Taylor. but <laughs> Sam Max came and delivered a powerful message, y'all. I want y'all to make sure that uh, y'all tap in with this interview. This is a powerful interview right here, and I want to say man, thank you, thank brother, you, my brother, for thank coming you. on. Absolutely. Bro, and thank I'm going to so tell everybody, y'all already know how I'm going to end this. This your boy, Lano XL. If ain't nobody told y'all anything, I'm going to tell y'all two things. Get money, stay true, stay true, get money. And yes, sir, man, if nobody told you today that they love you, you let me be the first one to tell you i love you i love you i love you family you're beautiful peace peace peace, peace.